What's going on YouTube and welcome back to another edition of Uncommon Sense. It's your man Uncommon Sense here and we talk about all things fragrance, fashion, style, mental health, well-being, and lifestyle. For my new folks, take a look at the content and if you like what you see, consider subscribing, liking some content, and leave a couple of comments. For my returning folks, welcome back. I love and miss y'all so very much and we're gonna get into this spring top 10. Y'all ready? Let's go! Every single day, I'm gonna make something great, that's my way. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great, that's my, that's my way. First up, we got an honorable mention. Cool Water, the coolest edition. This is a new take on the classic Cool Water DNA. Some may know it from Green Irish Tweed. Some may know it just from Cool Water. It has a shower gel vibe. This fragrance actually features a little pepper. Very fresh, but that peppermint just takes it in that direction and pushes it. This fragrance is kind of one of my everyday fragrances. Not necessarily limited to spring, but I would wear it more so in the cooler weather. It has that kind of icy type of feel. Only reason why it is not rated higher is because this lineup is just too challenging for this to be able to break into it. Also, in my experience, this fragrance wears a little light so I can go very heavy on the trigger with this one and it does kind of burn off a little quicker on my skin at about the three and a half hour mark. For those who do not necessarily like mint, peppermint, etc., this may not be your jam. That's the box and this big ice cube. So dope, right? Now we got the you digs nip out. We're gonna cleanse the palate, make sure we starting off fresh and everybody getting a fair shake, right? Right. Get your sniff for the fresh coffee beans. Come on, come on. All right, perfect. Dance break. Coming up to our number 10 spot, we got MAC Sense Shades Turquoise. Get to that bottle. This fragrance, it smells exactly like it looks. It smells turquoise, right? It's an aquatic, but it has floral notes in it, which I really enjoy. The MAC Scent Shade line, if you would, is typically marketed toward women. But here in that common sense, you know we do things a little different. I got Matt Velvet Teddy, and I have Turquoise. I believe this one's a bit more unisex. I got a shout out, D Beauty Medic. She sent me a sample of this in our sniff off. I'll include a link there for you to check that out. And we exchanged some fragrances, and we didn't tell each other what they were. This was one of the fragrances that I really, really enjoyed. So if you haven't watched that video, check that out. The fragrance is very much a floral with an aquatic vibe to it. This fragrance was a staple for me. It ticks some boxes for me. I'm getting more into floral. I'm not scared of certain profiles as much as I used to be when I first started. This fragrance is a go. Only odd is after about the two and a half, three hour mark, I don't smell much of it anymore. And I believe it's worth a shot. And that's why it made the 10 spot on this top 10 for spring 2022. Coming up to the number nine spot, Mr. Burberry. Get to that bottle. This is the EDP, Eau de Parfum. This fragrance does have several flankers. There's Indigo, there's the EDT. I gave this one a shot for several different reasons. One, I do like the House of Burberry for fragrances. Two, I wanted something a little different than Sweet Tonka Bean Amber Bomb. And I found out that Amazing Francis Kirchner is the nose behind this one. I enjoyed this one because it is a deeper, darker, citric aquatic. It has a green, woody citrus. It smells like something fresh, a renewal of sorts. When I first got it, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. It kind of reminded me of a designerish version of Cum Cat Hood by Mancera, which I wasn't the biggest fan of that either. It's that dryness, but the citrus in this one does tone up very nicely. And what I learned is when I bought this when I was spraying it in the wintertime and it wasn't doing really anything for me. Fast forward to a couple months later, one day to go run errands and I just kept smelling like, oh my God, what is that? Come to find out it was me. So you get citrus, you get woods, and a dark, sensual, musky fragrance out of this. Because it does bring something a little different to my collection. I feel like this fragrance and Kumquat Wood can stand on their own without it being redundant. Coming up to the number eight spot, Dunhill Icon. In addition, look at this presentation. Very heavy glass, reminds you of the old school doo microphones. This atomizer ain't no hoe either. Look at that. 
fire. This one's been in my collection for about two-ish years now. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. A lot of people liken it to like a grape soda. I do get that. What I've started to really enjoy about this fragrance is that peppery, musky veteran. The neroli in this one, a lot of people really don't rock with, but I actually am a fan of neroli. This one does draw close comparison to me, to Dunhill Century. However, this one's just a little bit more intense and a little bit more sexy, to be quite honest. It also puts me in the mind of Narcisa Rodriguez's Blue Noir with that very present, musky accord, but it's so gentlemanly. And I feel like for spring, this is a standout. The slight spice in the background is what takes it a little bit of a different direction than the dirty orange of Terry Darren Mays or the deep, dark central musk of Narcisa Rodriguez. All right, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. It's just fly to me. Coming up to the number seven spot, Terry Mugler's Cryptomint. You all are gonna know this one. If you don't, this atomizer and sprayer does leave a lot to be desired. I won't lie about that, but what it does, it does well. It hinges off of the classic angel men DNA and that kind of sweet gourmand, slightly spicy situation is captured here. The added note of mint with some chocolatey nuances is the perfect thing for me for spring. It actually smells like it looks like a starlight mint with angel men DNA in the background with a hint of chocolate. If you can fathom all of that and put it all together, that's what you get with this fragrance. If you've not smelled it, try to find you a dupe or something similar because I believe these are discontinued. In the beginning, that fresh blast of a mint with the subtle hints of a gourmand. It's just such a sexy fragrance and I feel like it's perfect for spring because again, fresh, sexy, cool, and crisp, boom. That's what you're gonna get out of Kryptonite. I'm Superman, as you see, this is my Kryptonite. If you can see, I'm about halfway through. I don't even know what I'm gonna do when I finish this bottle, but we're gonna have to figure it out and get into that thing because I'm gonna keep wearing this one. And this is why this is the number seven spot on this top 10 for 2022. Coming up to the number six spot, we have Givenchy Gentleman 2017. Look at that flacon. It looks like a flask, right? Pop the top, get you a swig. It's such a sexy, classy fragrance. Givenchy never disappoints when it comes to fragrances. My only art with this one, I don't really have an art with this one, so I take that back. Pineapple. This is such a fly fragrance. You get iris, you get pineapple. Those are the standouts on this one. It is just classy, you know? I wore it the other day, and I've also seen that a few more folks in Fred are rocking with this, so clearly, I'm on to something. They say great minds think alike, right? Right. This house is notorious for having multiple flankers of similar styles, with similar naming conventions, which can be super duper confusing. But the 2017 joint, it's light enough, crisp, it is still that hint of fruit with the iris, not as lipsticky as some of the iris-based fragrances, but there is something very sexy and sweet about it that makes you stand up and pay attention to it. So, it's the perfect thing that the gentleman will wear. You up. Coming up to our number five spot, Balenciaga's Flora Botanica. This fragrance is typically marketed towards women, but guess what, over the common sense, we're gonna do what? exactly what the fuck we want to do. And I'm going to try to put you on to something a little different than you normally would get. For the individuals who have not smelled this one, if you can find it at a good price, do so. Partially because, again, it is a floral, but it's an aquatic at the same time, and it features the note of cannabis. What's not to like? It has a garden lily type of vibe with that cannabis note. It's undeniable. Shout out to Mario Dones and D Beauty Medic for putting me onto this one in such a way and allowing me to experience it. Shout out to Mario Dones and Jemiah, the lovely, beautiful Fragcom couple who I love. And of course, D Beauty Medic, she sent me this as another blind sample. And as I wore that sample, I really got a chance to let this develop on my skin and develop a, not just a like, a love for it. So, Balenciaga's Flora Botanica is the number five spot on this top 10. If you're not giving it a shot, what you waiting on? Price to go down, man. And I really feel like 
if this was in a different bottle and not marketed towards women, I believe that more of the fellas in Prairie Comp will be rocking with this one because it's very different. I don't have anything in my fragrance collection that smells exactly like this. The closest thing I can think about is Musky Garden, but that has cranberry and peach, which takes it in a different direction. This is a floral with a cannabis note. It's very much the garden, like Jardine Escusi, but it's missing that sweetness, which allows this to stay in my collection because I don't do redundant purchases, and I feel like this one is head and shoulders above the rest for a nice spring day, crisp linen, white, you know, boat shoes. What, what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, rolling up to our number four spot. Kenneth Cole, Black Bold. Now, you may be a little confused. A dark fragrance wrapped in leather. How is it a spring fragrance? Because what I'm noticing is fragrances that come out around the fall, winter time are typically for the season ahead, in my experience. This is one of those. I got this for Christmas, gonna get a green, watery aquatic out of this one. It's something a little spicy in the background. It's herbaceous. It reminds me of walking through Jackson Park when all the flowers are blooming. This is like that. Very dark, but luscious and green. If I was to think about anything, it takes me back to my days of travel, which I've been doing a lot more of, and we're gonna showcase more of that. This reminds me of something very fresh and sexy in a jungle. There's a lush humidity to it, that is second to none. I don't have anything quite like this in my fragrance collection, but I feel like for spring slash summer, which we're getting ready to get into, man, you can't beat it. It's that color right there, that deep, dark forest green. If I had to characterize it with color, that's what you're gonna get. Get kind of cold, black bow. My mother put me onto this one. I had never even heard of it. So shout out to OG Mama, <laughs> who is putting us on to the fragrance gram and has been doing so since I came into this world. I love you so very much. This fragrance here, Kenneth Cole Black Bow, is one of the best in the Kenneth Cole line. To me, Kenneth Cole, with this fragrance, is standing head and shoulders against some of the heavy hitters for spring on this top team. Coming up to the number three spot, Victor Endorov's Spice Bomb Night Vision, the EDT, the Eau de Toilette. And I know you're probably thinking, how is a night fragrance by Spice Bomb making the spring? It's more apt, I believe, for the spring season. It's very sweet and fresh. I believe it has green apple, and I've gotten to wear it. I noticed wearing this in the fall and in the winter, it didn't perform as well, but I wore it in spring a couple of weeks ago. The ladies in the brunch spot were all on top of it. And if you don't know nothing about older black folk or older black ladies, let me tell you something. They will tell you the damn truth. If it don't smell good, they'll pull you to the side of Hey, whatever you wear, don't wear that no more, baby. That don't smell good. However, this one right here, there were several beautiful golden ladies that were very vocal about wanting to know what I had on and what I had going on. They love the way this fragrance smelled. I got multiple unsolicited compliments the last time I wore it. This is more spring than anything that I've experienced from the Vic of the Frog line. It doesn't have the spiciness that I'm used to from Spice Bomb. This has simply fresh, sexy, and electric. Those are the adjectives that I would use to describe this one. And again, it smells like it looks. A little deep and dark in the beginning, but it fades out and mellows out into something very green and present with a hint of sweet, like a big, juicy taffy apple. It's the bomb, getting to it. Coming up to my number two spot, Carolina Herrera's Chic. This is a favorite of mine, partially because it has that musky, ambergris, watermelon vibe that I feel is perfect for this season. My only op with this fragrance is, it's not the longest lasting fragrance, but it is such a classy, sexy scent that is second to none. The only other fragrances I'll put in this lineup to go head to head with this one will be Ed Hardy's Love and Luck and Creed's Millicium Imperial. Those are what this fragrance is something like. They're not the same, but they're similar to me. The only odd I have with this fragrance is this cap. I hate this cap. I put a dent in this one, especially with having a collection of about 190. I feel like this having a halfway dent in it, we are batting a thousand. The other thing is, again, I'm noticing it's not lasting as long as I'm anymore, so I don't know if that's the age getting to it or has my nose evolved and developed in such a way where I don't recognize it as much. So we gotta figure out a replacement for this when we get to that point. 
But the number two spot is still gonna go for Chic by Carolina Herrera because it is just that fresh, sexy, musky, slightly fruity and amber green, second to none. It's second to one. And I wanna pause for the calls and say, hey, let me know what you think of this top 10. Also, drop blue heart in the comment because we rocking all blue even though we're talking about spring and it's green and it's right and it's tight. Let me know if you're rocking with this video. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you're going to wear for your top 10 for spring because it's been pretty cool in Chicago so it hasn't been consistent. Just now getting to the point where I can wear these fragrances. Drop me some comments, some likes, some love. And again, I appreciate you for sticking around as we get into the number one spot for this top 10. Stay tuned. Because we're going to get into it. You made it. You hung around. You stuck in there. I appreciate all my new subscribers, all the returning viewers and subscribers. I also appreciate the people that are just breezing through and checking me out for the first time. Hopefully you'll stick around and come on back and check us all out and get into that thing with us. Now, getting to the number one spot is a newer fragrance to my collection and this one came out at the end of 2021. I've had this fragrance for a bit and I'm just now really starting to get into wearing it because Again, I was wearing it in fall and it really wasn't doing much. And in the wintertime, not so much. But I'm noticing springtime, it's when it comes alive. And this fragrance house is one that I thoroughly enjoy. I probably have about five or six from this fragrance house. This one is surely and slowly climbing to the top of the ranks, not to be outdone by a few others. This fragrance is John Barbados Indigo XX 420. Now, it's musky, it's aquatic, and it's very classy. It puts you in the mind of Blue de Chanel, but it has, I think, pink pepper, which kind of skews it in just a little bit of a different direction to make it very well blended. For a designer fragrance, almost, almost right at that niche quality where a lot of people may not rock with it because they may say it's a little too spicy or a little too musky for them. However, I feel like it's a perfect designer release for spring. Let's get into that thing. It reminds me, like I said, of Blue de Chanel. It's like a very well-dressed gentleman. I mean, what's up? The muskiness of this one is what I actually enjoy, as well as that slight hint of peppery. It's distinguished enough to me. And some may say that it's boring or it's safe, but I feel like in my collection, this one can stand head and shoulders with the Bulgari Blue, the Blue de Chanel. And again, it's not redundant to the fact where I don't feel like I need it. Hell, I got a four and a half ounce bottle. I can rock this. And this is one of the things I actually like about going to the retail shops because when I bought this fragrance, I ended up getting a bunch of John Bravado's goodies. A travel atomizer. I ended up getting a water bottle. I end up getting so many different things. I think I got a bag too. That's the thing that makes it dope about going to and getting the retail experience. We don't often get a chance to get that experience when we're shopping on the gray market or uh, at warehouses, etc. So don't forsake the retail experience. If you can afford it and you're into new releases, get to your store and check them out. Things are open back up now. And again, I really feel like this fragrance here is knocking on something. It lasts about five hours on my skin, and I enjoy that because I feel like anything longer than that probably would be annoying. Or it could just be one of those things where the fragrance is lasting longer, and I've just went anosmic to it. My nose is turning down the volume on it, it's not really puffing up like it normally would. I want to thank you all for sticking around, watching this top 10, watching my content, sharing, liking, comment, subscribing. Everything that you do allows me to do what I do. I love you from the bottom of my heart, top to sides, all the way around. We're gonna pick it up, love on you underneath, and put it down, and love on top. It's been your man, Uncommon Sense. And we out, just for now. And we'll see you next time. Be that or be square. All right, y'all. Yes! Till later.